Thank you very much. Um, Deputy Chair and colleagues, much has been said in this debate, which I'm not going to repeat, but my contribution today is to bring to the table some of the, the input from the people in Indi, um, the importance of giving voice, the importance of determining self-determination, supporting leadership, um, and making sure that we actually have accurate data. So as many colleagues in parliament know, my, many members of my community come to parliament as part of our INDI volunteer program. And today I'd like to acknowledge three of my volunteers, Catherine, Tracy and Luke, um, and particularly to Catherine, who has provided much of the background for this speech that I'm going to give. So I've asked Catherine to input and I'll be using her words as I move through. Um, she talks about her leadership and particularly her work with the Wodonga Aboriginal Network. She talks about um, the need to support young people in leadership, and she also talks about the need for uh, accurate data. So let's start with data. There's general agreement within the Aboriginal community that the population data issued by the ABS significantly underestimates the Aboriginal population living in Albury Wodonga. The 2016 data reports a combined total of approximately um, 113,000 people within the Aboriginal population, making up 2.6%, um, but around 3,000. Whereas anecdotal evidence from the community suggests that there are about 4,000 people of Aboriginal Torres Strait Islanders living in Albury Wodonga. And the, the significance of this is the allocation of funds is based on population data. So our numbers are way short of what the reality is. So we really need to look at it. And I want to talk now, if I could, in um, Catherine's words, in asking her to help me with my speech today. So um, I've asked her to introduce herself, and as I move through, I'll be using the personal pronoun I, as in Catherine's voice. So who am I? I am a proud Gundinjamara woman, a descendant of Susan MacDonald from Lake Conda area of southwestern Victoria. I've grown up and lived most of my life in the Wodonga Aboriginal community. I'd like to also acknowledge my father's English Irish heritage and believe by contributing both worlds it has provided me with a stronger understanding of the difficulties and challenges living in both worlds can present. Catherine along, says I, along with my sisters Jacqueline, Lucy and Mary, attended local primary schools and high schools before studying a Bachelor of Behavioural Science Psychology at La Trobe University in Wodonga. I continued my education by completing a postgraduate diploma of psychology with Central Queensland University via distance education. I was employed with the Department of Human Services for over 10 years before becoming a senior planner with the National Disability Insurance Scheme in July 2017. And Catherine's still currently living in Wodonga with her husband, Ash, and twin daughters, Charlotte and Maya. No small beginning in life. Catherine says she attributes her strong cultural connection to her mother, Auntie Judith Armit, a respected Aboriginal elder within the Wodonga community. And she's inspired by other local Aboriginal people, including Darren Moffat, Auntie Liz Hedda, Tammy Campbell, and the local Koori young people that she's connected with. She says, I've watched and listened to mum and influential, influential aunties sitting around my kitchen table as we discuss local issues for as long as I can remember. I have a strong desire to fuel change, reduce racism, increase self-determination and close the gap between Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal people. And Catherine is currently on the board of Albury Wodonga Aboriginal Health Services. She's a 2017 recipient of the Fellow of Indigenous Leadership, Emerging Leader, and she's current chairperson of the Wodonga Aboriginal Network. And I'd like briefly to talk of the Wodonga Aboriginal Network. It's one of 39 local Aboriginal networks operating in Victoria, made up of community volunteers. And the network is a fantastic way to bring Aboriginal people together from many different nations within Australia. They are a strong and diverse community. The network's participants support each other in a safe environment, and they assist individuals and organisations to connect, share, learn and lead to improve outcomes for Aboriginal people. The network promotes self-determination and helps local people determine local priorities and develop local solutions. And what a fantastic resource to a member of parliament. The local network's current community plan has four main goals. 
These include uh, reviving the Barjara Community a Cultural Centre, support and opportunities for young Aboriginal people, cross-border cooperation between Albury and Wodonga and vice versa, and collaborating with other local Aboriginal networks to assist in progressing initiatives programs at the regional level. And I'd like briefly to speak to some of these programs. The Bahajar Youth Program is for Aboriginal and Islander, Torres Strait Islander young people between the ages of 10 and 15, and it's designed to connect Koori young people to cultural, local services and community, and to improve cultural identity. So over the last six months, the youth program has had 67 students enrolled over five programs and has delivered 120 activities to participants. It's really working well, and I'd like to acknowledge the committee, the co-chair people, Walter Melrose, Velda Murray, Lisa Hetter, who's the treasurer, Tammy Campbell, the secretary, and Mark Cotty as a mentor. To thank you for your work, and particularly to Uncle Alan Murray and Brendan Kennedy for their work. Um, the program is auspiced by the Gateway Health Wodonga. There's another, a number of other projects that the work does with, in partnership with the City of Wodonga, the Koori Youth Council, um, hosted the first Victorian Blackout Youth Event, and yarning sessions were held to address three main topics around the need for stronger cultural connection, issues with drug and alcohol, and the need for youth activities. And as a direct result, the Koori Youth Wodonga Network was established and it works with young people who are living in Wodonga, supports young people and helps them to do the work that they need to do. So fantastic work. Another project is the Mara Healing Possum Skills Program. And Deputy Speaker, I think you're gonna love this one. The aim of the Mara Healing Possum Skin Pilot Program is for families who have a family member diagnosed with a terminal illness and they work through their grief that they are experiencing when a family um, has a diagnosis. So a, a pilot workshop was held in 2017 and 21 community members participated. And a possum skin sash was made up to help the family during their sorry business and for future ceremonies. And we're currently seeking funding to take this project much wider, but so powerful and the, the little, little um, pieces that was made are now being put into sort of an, um, like an, an, um, a quilt, which is going to be held in the Aboriginal um, Health Service. So it's great work. But I'm conscious my time is running out and I wanted to use some more of Catherine's words. And I asked her, what's her future for the vision for Albury Wodonga Aboriginal community? And she said, I have a strong responsibility and obligation to ensure our culture is honoured with authenticity and the Aboriginal communities across Indi are sustained with strong, recognised leaders. And the key to this is to strengthen our families to ensure healthy communities. <clears throat> And Catherine's vision for the future includes a rise in self-determination and a decrease in racism. racism. Self-determination is the key for us to make our own decisions about our needs and taking ownership of our own culture and future. She says that historically this right has been taken away and as a result our people have suffered greatly. In order for self-determination to be fully effective, further development of skills needs to be implemented to assist with strong governance and decision making how right she is. She says the, strong, the young Aboriginal people in our community have a significant role to play in leading self-determination into the future. And therefore it is important to provide the new generation of emerging leaders with the skills and knowledge required to ensure our people succeed in moving forward. Catherine commits to working towards this goal with the support of the, Aboriginal, uh, the Wodonga Aboriginal Network and community leaders. So colleagues, what a strong and powerful call. And how proud I am to say, I am a representative of my Aboriginal and Torres Strait people in North East Victoria. And I'd like to take the opportunity today to acknowledge, honour and thank them for all their work. And I'd particularly like to acknowledge their patience and tolerance as they work with non-Indigenous people like myself who come with goodwill, um, but often need tutoring and care. And I finish with my comments, like many others today, to make a commitment to work with the leaders in the community to do everything we can do within my community and with this nation to close the gap. And I'd like to particularly acknowledge you and thank you, Catherine, and wish you well in your leadership journey. I thank the member for Indi for her contribution.